Of course, we're talking a lot about these upcoming midterm elections, partly because we want Republicans in the majority so we can have some real oversight in this government. We need to have oversight hearings so the administration can't do whatever they want without anybody calling them out on it. But regardless of whether we get that majority and those hearings or not, there's one organization in this town, one guy in this town, who continues to serve that function no matter who's in charge of Congress. He's Tom Fitton, the president of Judicial Watch. I really do believe you're you're doing the Lord's work here in terms of real oversight of this government, no matter what party is in charge. And I appreciate that, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Well, I appreciate the good word. And, you know, we just have a great team here. Uh, I, I just can't tell you how excited I am to be working with the hard a hard-nosed group of investigators and yep. lawyers to figure out what the heck's going on. In and, this and they work so hard, and their FOIA requests are so effective. Let's not forget it was Judicial Watch's FOIA request that uncovered the fact that Hillary Clinton wasn't using a government email server. That was kind of a big deal. And now I think you're breaking another big deal. Uh, and this transcends um, party lines and both administrations, because you've uncovered some emails through a recent FOIA request that shows that people at the HHS, Health and Human Services, and CDC, they we're talking about really severe side effects with regard to these vaccines quietly amongst themselves, while at the same time the administration was pushing those things and even threatening people's jobs if they didn't get the shot. What did you learn, Tom? Well, there was email traffic uh, among uh, senior CDC officials talking about uh, myocarditis um, being a, an issue in adolescents. And this wasn't last week, you know, because now, of course, it's accepted that it's potentially an issue. It was last May. And uh, what's frustrating to us is uh, there's been noise about this. And I don't mean noise in a negative sense, but, you know, anyone who's been following this story has recognized this risk for some time. Uh, but to have government emails confirm they were concerned about it and the fact that they hid these emails and we had to sue to get them. It just heightens the scandal. It does. And and I know you've got a, a whole cache of like over a thousand emails that you guys are coming through. This one popped out at the beginning. Um, myocarditis, it, it's clear now that young men who are susceptible to this in their uh, late teens and into their 20s, there are actually more young men who are suffering from the side effects of myocarditis from these shots than young men who suffered from COVID-19. Literally, this so-called cure is worse than the disease itself for them. You know, and when you see when you see uh, documents like this, and when you hear the politics around this, you know there are a lot of questions about this. Let's let's take a step back and say, well, you know, we need to figure out what's going on. Does anyone trust this government to do an honest assessment here? I don't. Yep. And instead, we get this gamesmanship and hiding records. And I forget the group of records that this was referenced to in terms of hiding. You remember, it's like two, three months ago, where they were caught hiding information and records because to release the information would increase vaccine hesitancy. Right, right. Yeah, they, they actually said, oh, we can't let that out there because people might be hesitant to take the shot. Well, for good reason. Uh, and it all sort of comes into this, the overarching issue here with government protecting this information and keeping it secret is that they don't trust us. They don't think we, the people, are either intelligent enough or have the ability to discern facts from fiction and information to be able to make decisions on our own. This goes everything against our, what our nation was founded on. Yeah, but on the other hand, and I agree with that, uh, and let's be clear, a lot of this is they were engaged in corrupt behavior. They don't want people to know about it. Yeah. They didn't want no pe people to know about their funding the Wuhan Institute. They didn't want to be tied to gain a function research, so they lied about it and hid documents about it till we forced them out. And now we're seeing document after document come out about the booster and the and the COVID vaccine that show there was this unrelenting, inappropriate pressure within the agencies uh, to push this out despite um, concerns that it wasn't needed in the sense they thought the original vaccine worked, and despite and despite concerns. Yeah. 
uh, about the uh, consequences of the uh, booster regime. Tom, there's another insidious aspect of this, and that is uh, back in May when these government officials were speaking amongst themselves about the dangers of myocarditis and the possibility that uh, young men who are getting this shot are actually uh, risking their health because of it. If you or I expressed that opinion, on our social media page, on Twitter, for instance, or if we cited a overseas study that actually had come up with these same results, we know now that the Biden administration, they were communicating with big tech and they were trying to get that information deleted or censored or a red flag put on it. So they're, they're, they know that it's true. And yet if you or I, just mere citizens of this country express the same thing, they actually silence our speech. Well, that's right, and the after effects that, of that remain today. Uh, these documents we're talking about here are government documents, and you know, and I know to be careful because I know there's a target on our back, and yet Facebook continues to vandalize our content about these government documents that simply describe them at, at, with uh, some warning message about COVID and warning people, uh, do you really want to share this? So the suppression continues even as we uncover yeah. information that is the result of the suppression. It's incredible. Well, and Tom, I mean, listen, you are being targeted Judicial Watch, but then you personally, you were removed from Twitter for months and months and months for expressing your opinion on that platform. I'd love to hear you're back now, thank God, and we need your voice out there. But reflect a little bit on what appears to be now the official uh, a reorientation of ownership of Twitter. Elon Musk, $44 billion later, he uh, walked in the doors yesterday with that sink, let that sink in. Uh, are you hopeful that Elon Musk is going to stay true to what he says he wants to do with Twitter, make it an actual open platform for ideas? Well, he's repeatedly said that uh, he wants it to be an open platform. He wants free speech. He wants people, as I noted uh, even today on Twitter, um, you know, you have the left that's opposed to even seeing speech. You know, forget about your right to speak. They don't want to see, let you see what other people say if they don't like it either. Right. So uh, this, is a, this is a real serious threat to, in my view, the First Amendment, because as you highlight, you've got this government connection. You know, his statements have been repeated and consistent in terms of uh, supporting uh, a, an open platform. But we'll see what happens, because we know the left is already trying to attack him for his commitment to free speech. Uh, the Biden administration, uh, I guarantee you, will target him. They've already targeted him today um, over this commitment to free speech. You see it in the media today. Uh, the left media is concerned if he fires people or if he takes the, well, he's going to take it over, I guess, this week, that they won't be able to censor enough people before Election Day, you know, to help their Democratic friends. I mean, this is this is just naked power politics. And, you know, he may be a billionaire, uh, but as uh, Kanye West shows, um, you know, it, that, that doesn't protect you if, uh, if, if the establishment decides to come after you. Yeah, uh, and in the case of Elon Musk, you know, he hasn't even done anything controversial in the sense uh, that Conway West did. So, I mean, boy, he, he needs to really bolster his defensive well, defenses and be prepared to go on the offense as well. Unlike you or I, he is, in fact, the richest man in the world. So, I mean, if anybody is uncancelable, I think he's pretty close to it. Uh, the question is whether he has the, the courage of his convictions and can follow through. Of course, the other step here is if they can't silence him, what they'll do is they'll bully advertisers to pull their funding from Twitter and they'll, the, to get them to not... Uh, uh, advertise there on the platform. But we'll, we'll have to follow that up in another conversation. Tom Fitton, president of Judicial Watch. My friend, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you. Coming up, we've got more. Keep it here on O'Connor Tonight.